Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer and welcome to 2022. Uh, today I'm gonna make a quick video where I show you what I have on my iPhone's home screen because I think at the start of a new year, I always make some tweaks to my home screen to just change things up a little bit to kind of make my iPhone more tailored to what I want it to be for me. Uh, so oftentimes it's a distraction device, it's a social media device, it's an entertainment device, but it can do a lot of these other things that I find more valuable to my time overall, um, such as productivity, such as health stuff. Like there's things that the iPhone can do that I really want to promote a little bit, at least in January, maybe by like February, March, it'll kind of fall back to like YouTube and that sort of thing. <laughs> but I really want to take this opportunity to rethink what my iPhone home screen is to try to change some of my habits a little bit around the new year. We'll see if it works, but let's go through what I have on my iPhone's home screen now. Okay, so let's start with the dock. Uh, the dock doesn't change very often, but I've made two big changes this year. Uh, the first two have been the same since I've owned an iPhone since 2011, I think, when I got my first iPhone. Um, I have messages over here because I live in the U.S. and we use SMS and iMessage for literally all of our communication <laughs> with each other. Uh, and then I have the camera app, which is just the Apple camera app, and it's reliable, it works fast, and I just want quick access to it at all times. My iPhone is a camera um, really first, <laughs> and all the other things second and third. So um, yeah, I love having that up front. But then we get to Audible, which is uh, taking the place of Overcast that I had here previously. So I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and in 2022, I wanna focus a little bit more on books. Um, I don't necessarily wanna read like 100 books or anything, I don't need to do that, but I wanna kind of put my mind uh, to be the default for listening to books rather than listening to podcasts. I'm still gonna listen to podcasts, that's on my second home screen, but I wanna focus more on books this year and kind of just make that the thing that I'm more likely to listen to when I just wanna kill some time when I'm like walking the dog, that sort of thing. So that actually replaced the podcast app that I've been using for, again, maybe since I've had an iPhone. <laughs> now, instead of a podcast app, I have Audible down there. We'll see if this sticks, but that's a pretty big change for me personally. The other app in the dock is Matter. Matter is my read it later service that I use to just read things on the web at a later date. Uh, I've made numerous videos, I think, about Matter before, so I'll kind of link those in the description for you. But the gist is I want to spend my time on my iPhone uh, rather than watching videos, which is what used to be here. In this spot, I used to have YouTube. Now I want to have this to see if I can do a little bit more reading on my iPhone when I, again, have those couple minutes to kill, read an article rather than watch a video. We'll see how that works, but uh, that's what I have right now. So that's the doc. And now we get to the apps on the home screen and we have a couple boring ones at the top. There's photos just because like I said, my phone is a camera first in many cases. So I wanna have access to my photo library and my videos. So photos has to be on here and Safari has to be on here because I use the web a ton. The web is super, super important, super, super useful. And Safari is the best web browser on the iPhone in my opinion. So that's the one that goes here. But we get to third-party apps after that, and Reader is the first one here. Reader is an RSS reader you can use to just follow whatever websites you want, whether they be blogs, news sites, or anything else. Um, RSS is great. I've been using RSS for well over a decade. I love, love, love it. Uh, even when people started to move to like, oh, I can just get all my news from Twitter, or social media is a better way to follow the news. I guess if you wait long enough, you become right again. <laughs> but a lot of people are kind of falling off the social media is a great news source uh, idea. And I, yeah, uh, it's maybe not the best idea to have all of your uh, newsworthiness be dependent on social media websites and other people sharing them. Um, anyway, that's a tangent. Um, I use Reader. I think it's the best RSS reader for the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. I use it across all those devices. It's fantastic. Next up, we have Things. Things is a task manager, and I really don't have to say much more about it because I've made so many videos about it on this channel. If you watch this channel at all, you know that Things is my task manager of choice. Uh, and basically, I just like how easy it is to use. I've been able to tailor it exactly to what I need from an app like this. Um, it has some things that I wish it did differently. I made a video about what I wish Things version 4 would bring to the table, but yeah, it remains in 2022 my productivity app of choice. Now, kind of speaking of social media, I have TweetBot. TweetBot is a third-party Twitter app, and basically it's a way to read Twitter uh, without using the Twitter app. And I use it for a couple specific reasons. Uh, the first reason is because I have a lot of customizability with it that I don't get from the normal TweetBot, or normal Twitter app, I should say. Uh, so I get things like color controls, I get icons, I get uh, text resizing, I get font changes, like I get all these ways to customize the app to kind of change how things look, change how the app behaves. And some of that is coming to the regular Twitter app with like their Twitter blue subscription, which is a little annoying, that kind of should just be there, but whatever. Um, I use TweetBot for that because I get to customize the app a little bit, I get this different look and feel, which I really love. 
And then I also use it because ironically, it makes me use Twitter less. <laughs> so Twitter does a really good job with its algorithmic feed of finding the tweets that it thinks you'll be the most interested in and surfacing those to the top. Tweetbot does not do that. Tweetbot just gives you a raw list of everything that's happening in the people with the people you follow. And that is less engaging. <laughs> so it may be better and there may be reasons why you prefer that. Um, I actually find it a little less engaging. Um, but for me, that's a little healthy right now because it means I spend less time on social media and I think that's probably a good thing. So I hop into Tweetbot, I check my mentions, um, I just enjoy the look of the app and then I kind of get out um, quicker quicker than I would be on the normal Twitter app where I might get to, like see some really engaging tweets and then pull to refresh and then see more, pull to refresh, see, to, see more. I don't do that with Tweetbot as much. So that's why Tweetbot is on my home screen. Then there's a newest app on here, which is Happy Scale. Happy Scale is an app for tracking your weight, uh, and it does some things that are pretty clever with making sure it's a positive experience. Outside of the just smiling scale at you, which makes it a less daunting thing, <laughs> um, it does some nice stuff with how it displays data. It's a, got a more positive vibe to it. Um, it doesn't really, it tries to do things like prevent you from obsessing over like a two pound weight gain from like Monday to Tuesday, uh, because that probably doesn't mean anything at all. So. It does a really nice job of that. It's a really nice UI for quickly logging your weight every day. Uh, in 2020, one of the things that I'm really focusing on is my health. I'm in my mid thirties and I really want this year, like my new year's resolution, if you will, is to be in the best shape of my entire adult life. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. And weight tracking is a part of that. So happy scale, I hope will help me do that throughout the year. And then we have Drafts, and Drafts is a great app. Uh, they are also sponsoring this video, um, but I didn't have to modify my home screen at all because I use Drafts and I love Drafts. Uh, so yeah, basically what I use Drafts for is capturing text from my world, wherever that happens to be, and then sending it to other things. Um, sometimes I just wanna save some information in Drafts and that's cool, um, but other times I wanna like save something for a blog post and then I send that text to Ulysses, or I wanna save it for an email and I send it to Spark for email. Um, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with drafts uh, with text once you've gotten it. But I wanna talk about today specifically about kind of what they've done to improve the app over 2021 is they've added more ways for you to get text into the app. So previously you could type it in, you could paste it in, you could use the share sheet from another app to get text in there, but they've added a couple really cool ones this year. The first one is live text uh, detection using iOS 15's new live text feature. <laughs> so if you have something in the physical world that you wanna scan and get the text from, you can just start a new draft, you can scan it with your iPhone's camera or your iPad's camera, and it will create a new draft with that text in a document. So you get the text in the document, you don't have to like have the piece of paper or whatever, you can throw that out. So that's really nice. Uh, you also have the ability to upload PDFs. So if you have a PDF you wanna get into drafts, you can just create a new draft from a PDF and it'll take all the text from that PDF and put in a draft for you. The third one and the final one that I think is really cool is if you have a video or audio file that you want to transcribe into plain text, uh, you can do that with drafts now as well. You just have to have it in iCloud Drive and you can create a new draft from a transcription and you can give it the file, it'll go through it and create a text file with all the text that happened uh, or that was said in that video clip or audio clip. This is actually what I used to transcribe the uh, the audio for my interview with the Kraft vice president um, that I did back in December uh, because that was a long conversation and it was way too much work to just type it out um, manually. So I used the transcription feature, took a couple minutes to transcribe it, and I had this plain text version of the interview that was able to kind of mark up myself and modify and kind of you know change the words that it didn't quite get right, but. It was an incredible time saver for something like that. And so that's super, super valuable. Transcribing stuff like this is actually very expensive <laughs> in most cases. And to have a free option built into drafts, uh, which I guess drafts has a subscription fee uh, as well. But regardless, I think you can use it with the free option as well. Anyway, um, it's a really cool feature, really new or really great things they added in 2021. And so I'm really happy that drafts is on my home screen and that they're sponsoring this video. And then finally, there's YouTube and YouTube is, well, you're watching it now, so you know what YouTube is. <laughs> um, I personally prefer to use the app than the website on my iPhone. Um, it's just a better experience. I think the app is actually really, really good. Um, it doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. I know a lot of people don't like it for some reason, but as a YouTube premium subscriber, I actually really love it. There's no ads. It's just, it's really fast, really easy, works great for me. So it's on my home screen, not in my dock anymore since I'm trying to use it a little less, but uh, definitely still belongs on my home screen because I get tons of value from YouTube. I learn lots of things on YouTube and yeah, I just think it's really great. So it's on my home screen as well. 
Hey, so I was editing the video and I realized I didn't talk about the widgets at the top of the screen. So what's going on in the widgets? Uh, very short. Uh, I have carrot weather, which I think has the best weather widgets. Just it's the best one. I always like having the weather on my home screen. And then next to it, I have a smart stack uh, with like six or seven apps like Happy Scale, um, Fitness app. I have Coinbase alerts. I have um, just random stuff that I think is useful throughout the day. It's passive stuff. I have it set to smart uh smart rotate, uh, which means that iOS will look at all the contents of everything and kind of figure out based on what the apps say is important, which one is most important right now and show me that one. So in general, I see the most relevant one whenever I unlock my phone. I love having two widgets on the home screen. I don't use a million widgets, but those I find really useful. And that's it. There's a lot of other apps on my iPhone, but we don't have time to get into all of them. Hopefully this was kind of an interesting look at how I have my home screen set up what some of the most important apps to me are and kind of what I want my iPhone to do for me in the new year. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments. If there's any apps that are kind of similar to this and you think I would enjoy, love to hear that as well. So uh, let me know. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button and I will see you here next time. Bye-bye.